Okay, so we're gonna go through this monitor up here now, right? So anything on this monitor, it's not a touch screen. It's, it's far away from your hand, right? So we don't want it to be a touch screen anyways. So to change anything on this monitor up here, you have to spin this H down here. So the H has a spin and then to activate, you would push down on the center. And then if you wanna to go to the home screen, you would hit home or to get back, you would hit escape. So you can go back to this screen now up here. So the active part of the screen will be this red square up here as I spin this H. And then we have a few different functions. So I'll run you through what all the functions are. So up here, it's showing engine RPM. Beside it, it's showing your current ground speed. Then we have two cruise control speeds. So seven and 33 mile an hour is where we're at right now. This bar graph right here is showing the position of your front axle. If your four wheel steering was turned on, you'd have another one down here showing the position of your rear axle. This is showing the width of your front axle. This one is showing the width of your rear axle for your track spacing. Down here, we have hydraulic temperature, hydraulic pressure, air pressure, engine power, our coolant or engine temperature, and then we have fuel usage right here. Then we have def level, fuel level. This is showing us the ladder is facing down in the down position right now. If we weren't in park, you'd see that you're in joystick mode right here. This is the seat. I'm sitting in it, so it's not X'd out in red. And then it's telling us that we're in park and this is neutral. And you have engine hours, temperature, date, and time down here. So up here on the top, we have this very first one, which is our track width. If I spin the H and go to that first one and then push down on the H, it's showing us where we can change our track width. So right now it's grayed out because it says we're in road mode. So we're gonna go down here, take it out of road mode, and now it's not grayed out anymore. If I wanna bring my tires all the way out, I'm gonna spin that H over to where it says 118, push down, make it active, and then it goes by one inch increments for whatever row spacing you want, like when you're doing corn or potatoes or whatever, you can pick whatever row spacing you want, all the way out to 161 is the max. If I push down on the H right now, it'll change both of these numbers to 161. So both axles will start moving as soon as you start driving three kilometers an hour. So it won't move when you're sitting still. If I go down then, so I'll, I'll take that back down to 118 so we don't get a warning to start driving faster. This guy right here, this little lock in the center, what this does, it means we can make two different track widths. So when I do this, if I unlock this now, you can see the bottom one I can change independently from the top, right? So I go down here now and I can make my back axle all the way out. So when I do this is when I have the fat tires on. So if I put my back axle all the way out and my front axle all the way in at 118, what that's gonna do is make four tracks instead of two. So if I'm in really, really dry conditions, the front tire disturbs the soil and the stubble. The back tire is the one that actually kicks up the majority of the dust. So I can reduce my dust by making four tracks instead of two. And same thing for in-crop herbicide application. You know, the front tire is the one that lays the wheat over when that second tire drives over the wheat the second time, when it's already laid over, that's when it really does the damage. So if I make four tracks instead of two with those big 900 tires, you know, it's really tough to see where you drove the next day. The crops just pop up faster. So this is where you would offset your two wheel spaces. But if I go down here, I'll take that back down to 118, which should be good for, you know, driving around on the road. And then I'd lock it. And that means the front axle will always be in the same width as my back axle. When I have my skinny tires on, I never offset my axles. I always want my tire tracks to be the same width because wherever that skinny tire drives, it's going to kill that crop anyways. So if you want to put it into road mode, it's this button right here. And then I can take it off. So the road mode switch, if I turn this button on, now I can hit this guy up here. back into this one that might be because our engines off right now you have to have the engine running to show it like I showed you earlier so if your engine was running right now you have to have this guy checked off right here and this switch on right here and then you'd be able to go into road mode as soon as you go into road mode the screen kind of changes 
Okay, the next one right here is gonna be how you change your cruise control speeds. So I go into there and you can see it's seven mile an hour and 32. So usually what I do is I put my headland speed up here and I put my spray speed here. So when I get to a headland to make my turn, this number is what I want for turning speed. This number is my actual spray speed. So how fast are you gonna spray? Probably uh, 14 miles 14. Mile. So we'll go down to 14 by moving that H down here. Perfect. And uh, seven miles per hour is pretty good for turn speed. That's not yeah. bad right there. So now when I hit the escape button, you can see we have seven and 14 for our speeds, which would be number one and number two on the joystick now. So if I hit number one, it's gonna slow down to seven miles per hour. If I hit number two, it's gonna speed up to 14 and use enough engine RPM to keep you at those speeds. The next one down is our headland management mode. So if I go into this screen right here, you can see it's checked off with a green square at the top there. I can turn it off and that means nothing's gonna happen at my headlands. But right now I'll leave it on. So when I hit the number one button right now, it's gonna slow down to seven miles per hour I want my four wheel steering to turn on. So I'm gonna check that box off right here. And I'm gonna leave my auto steer on. So what that means now, I'm gonna come into my headland, it slows down to four miles an hour, or seven miles an hour, as soon as I hit number one, my four wheel steering turns on. I'm gonna make my turn now, right? The four wheel steering is active when I'm making my turn. And again, I only ever use four wheel steer when the skinny tires are on. When the fat tires are on, I don't really care because making a sharp turn doesn't matter to me as much. So I only ever use four wheel steer, skinny tires, when I really care about that tramping on my headlands in the crop, right? When I come out of the headland, I'm gonna hit the number two button right here. It's gonna speed up to 14 miles per hour. My four wheel steering turns off because it's not checked, right? Because I want four wheel steering off when I'm going down my straightaways. And I want my auto steer to engage as soon as I hit that button. So you're gonna get it back into your tracks, make sure it's lined up straight, hit that number two button, and it's gonna do all of those things at once. Turn off four wheel steer, engage the auto steer, and speed up to 14 mile an hour. As you came out of your headland, as soon as the nozzle's turned on, your boom is also gonna drop down to that 15 inch boom height, right? Right there. But that's all done automatically through this screen. So this is all set up perfect for you right now, how you're gonna use the sprayer. Yep. If you didn't want four wheel steer, you would just uncheck that box right there, which just like that. Okay, next page here is going to be our joystick settings you were asking about. So I go into the picture of the sprayer and then I go to the joystick. So I push down on that one and then you have a picture of your right hand console here. Push down one more time on the picture of the joystick and it's going to tell us what all these buttons are doing now on the joystick. So to run you through all of the joystick buttons, this button up here is auto steer engage right now. So say you steered around a slew or something, you manually disengaged, you get back onto your line, hit this button right here, your auto steer engages. Right beside it, that's our master switch. Pretty self-explanatory for that one. On this guy right here, we have up and down on our main rack. And then we also have tilt on the main rack. So this sprayer can also tilt that main rack side to side. No other sprayer can do that, but I don't really use that feature a lot because if you tilt the main rack, the other side's gonna go up. One side goes up, one side goes down. Yeah. So you could drop your boom into the ground, right? If you wanna lift up over an obstacle, you're gonna use these ones down here. So if I see a fence post come, I need to lift over on my right side, I'm gonna hold up this plus button right here. As soon as I clear that fence post, I'm gonna tap down once on the minus and it's gonna go back down to the boom height I was spraying at. Same thing on this side over here from my left side, up and then down. You have your two cruise control speeds right here, number one and number two for your headland mode. And then number three, we have programmed for our four wheel steer. So number three, when I hit it, my four wheel steer is active. When I hit it again, four wheel steer is turned off. So it's important on these sprayers, never engage the auto steer when the four wheel steer is on and you're a long ways away from the line because it'll take your booms for a ride because it's it's reacting faster than the controller thinks it is because the controller thinks it's only steering with one axle if you try to engage the auto steer with four axles on or two axles steering it's going to steer more than it thinks so it'll overcorrect if you're close to the line it's fine 
but if you're far away away from the line and you want it to make a nice turn and find the line for you, make sure four wheel steering is turned off. So you can turn off four wheel steering anytime if it's on by just hitting this number three button. So it's easy. Usually if I'm coming out of a headland and I know I'm far away from the line, I want to engage, I'll hit number three first, turn four wheel steering off, then hit auto steer engage up here. Any questions about this? Good. So what's uh, four? Pardon? Four? What's number four? What's number that four, you can program that into whatever you want. So we'll go down here now to number four. What is right that now, that symbol, symbol means headland mode on and off. So if I want to turn off all those headland functions when I get to a headland and not use it, when I hit number two and number one, I would hit number four and it would turn all those functions on or off. So we can change that to whatever we want though. Our options are the four wheel steering like we uh, had on there. We also have manual steering for your back axle. You leave it as an X, it'll do nothing. If you put it as this minus, it'll go down in 5% on your uh, rate. This would be if you had you know, the lift kit for the Ontario machines, right? But we don't have that option here. And then the change, the headland management on and off. Um, you know, do you have any suggestions? Like, what do you want on that, that button? Um, Cause we can put anything there in the software. It's just, we gotta build the software to do it. Yeah. Yeah, well, I, I would like if I can use the three and the four yes. as um, switching on my intro nozzles. Yes. Yeah. That's a good idea. So make these two buttons right here programmable. Yeah. to uh, the fence row. So I'll send that to the software guys. Maybe they'll even watch this video. So we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be um, great. yeah, I know, but somewhere the fence row nozzles have to be either on here or down here, I think, to make that work the way I want. Yeah, I'd like it if it's there because you'd possibly be driving and you just get to one little piece that you want to spray yes. a little bit further. You yeah. can just pop one. So anything on. when the sprayer is moving, I don't want to touch this while the sprayer is moving. I want to yeah. have my hand here yeah. or down here while the sprayer is moving. Because if the, I'm bouncing around through the field, I don't want to touch something here because I could touch the wrong button. Yeah. So it should be down here. I agree. Just not there yet. Okay, so that covers that screen. If I go over once, you're going to see the back of the joystick. Okay. So you know how to drive this thing already. So your pinky finger is this button right here to put it in drive. You also have another auto steer engage button right here. Then you have two more buttons right here, but they don't do anything right now. That'll be future functionality. We'll program something in there okay. in the future. Yeah, even even if you can put the fence or nozzles on there too, that would... Yeah, that'd be good. That'd be good. So down yeah. here, these buttons all have labels on them, right? So that, that'd be to change these ones right here. So you can see all the labels of what's there. You never really use any of these ones. You know, you have manual four-wheel steering if you want to use it. These buttons do nothing on your sprayer because you don't have the lift kit. Same with this one right here. This ladder button you might use sometimes, but the ladder goes up and down automatically if your door is slammed all the way shut. So you never have to really use that either. Okay. The other buttons on our right-hand console that you can't really see on the screen here because you can't change them, you have these four electronic remotes right here. What they do, so they, these two right here, this right here would take my left side boom and lift it up or down. This right here would take my left side outside flex and lift it up or down. Same thing on the right. This is inside flex up and down, outside flex up and down. This right here is a speed limiter. So what this does is if I push it all the way forward, that means I have full range of speed on the foot pedal down here. If I push it all the way back and I push this foot pedal all the way down, the sprayer is just going to barely creep forward, like crawling onto a trailer or something like that. If I want to use foot pedal mode, the way to make it active, right now it's in neutral, right? But all you would do is tap this guy forward right here. So that would be forward, that's reverse, and now it's gonna work with the foot pedal. If you don't touch okay. this ever, it's just the joystick like normal. Make sense? Do you ever use the foot pedal? Huh. No, neither do I, <laughs> but I figure I could use the foot pedal and uh, eat a sandwich while I'm spraying a headland, right? So I'll have one hand on the steering wheel one foot control my speed down here. I don't have to have a hand on my joystick anymore, right? Which is kind of nice. Okay, so other functions on this screen here. This one is your service interval. So if you get a warning at the bottom saying service interval due, you go into this screen here and it's gonna come up every 10 hours saying, hey, go outside and you know check your tire pressures or do some greasing or whatever, right? I don't recommend greasing this thing. Like the only grease circs you have to do are gonna be your suspension and your main parallelogram on the booms, but that's roughly every 
you know, 20, 30 hours, somewhere in there, right? I do it once a week, maybe, and uh, check those ones. Uh, but other than that, there's nothing on the booms to do because there is no grease nipples out there. You got a grease nipple on your breakaway and that's it. But the rest of the booms, there's nothing there. Uh, this one here is to turn on your defrosting mirrors. Probably never use that. Uh, this one, if you run in big hills, you can set a minimum engine RPM. So if you're running in big hills and you want to make sure it doesn't go all the way down to say eight, 900 RPM going down that hill and then go all the way back up and ramp all the way up again, I could put a minimum RPM of whatever I want in here. So say I don't want it to go below 1600 RPM. All I would do then is save that to 1600 and then make this a green square right here. I can't do it because the engine's off. But as soon as I push down on this H and I make this a green square, the engine will not drop below 1600 RPM. So very nice feature when you're in big, big hills, you're still gonna, it'll ramp all the way up to 2000 when it needs it, but going down the hill, it's not gonna ramp below 1600. If you're on flat ground, you won't need this feature. So forget about it on flat stuff, but I do know you have some good yeah, hills. Some hills. So you'll need to use this feature in there. Yeah. So to get to it, right, it's just the picture of the engine. Uh, the next one is our ladder settings. So I leave these both checked off all the time. It just means the ladder comes up automatically as soon as you start driving. And as soon as you put it in park, the ladder automatically goes down. So leave these on. I think that's the way it should be. So yeah, it only picks up with the doors. The door closed, has to right? be slammed all the way. So the reason why, right, if that ladder comes up with the door yeah. open, you're buying a new door. So yeah. <laughs> just make sure you don't put your finger on that sensor. Because yeah. then the door can, then the ladder can come open when the door is closed, open, okay. right? Okay, next one is our tire size. Good, so I'm glad we checked this today because this is wrong. Because right now it's set for the skinny tires, Yeah. right? So what we need to do now is change this to our 900 tires that are on it. Because what this is going to do is slightly change our ground speeds. So we have to change our width okay. right here. We're going to change that to 900. Because they're not 380 tires anymore, right? We got big 900. I have 900s on this one, right? Yeah, 900. Perfect. What are those skinnies? Skinny. The skinnies are 380 mil. So you have a 380-105R54 skinny. And we have a 900 millimeter fat tire. So that's 900. This one, I don't know these tires, so we're gonna have to go to the tire manufacturer website. And what this is, is our static radius of that tire, loaded radius. So basically the width. Okay, or when it's loaded. Exactly, but we can find that yeah. off of the manufacturer's website. We'll go look that up and find out what this is. It's not gonna be a heck of a lot different between the two, but we do have to be exact to make sure our ground speed is correct. Okay. Um, but we'll go check that. The next one there is just the offset of your rim. You know, that's just to make sure if you're running in tall corn that your row spacing was absolutely perfect. But we can get out the measuring tape and measure all of that stuff right now as well. Okay. And then if you wanted to save it, go down there. And now you can see we're saved at 900 for our width, right? But we got to go and measure this one. And we'll measure these two numbers. Because I don't know those off okay. the top of my head for 900, these particular tires. Okay. But we got to do that. This one here, you could disable the seat switch in here if you wanted to. So to bypass it, if you wanted to, you know, rock a piss while you're spraying, right? And yeah, smoke you could, a cigarette outside. And... Yeah, don't do, don't do that. It's <laughs> not smoking the sprayer would be really sad. I but... said outside. Yeah, yeah. Anyways, the the <laughs> we'll leave this one off. Um, next one is going to be this one. You'll use fairly often. I recommend doing this once every morning before you leave the yard. So this is to calibrate your uh, steering cylinders. Uh, most sprayers, the way it works is you just steer all the way to the left, steer all the way to the right, and it phases those cylinders. We are going to retrofit this sprayer to do exactly that, so you'll never have to go into the screen again. Okay. That'll happen probably mid-summer, I'm guessing, is when that kit's going to come in. But until mid-summer and we get that installed, you're going to have to go into here every morning. All you're going to do is click down. This will be your front axle. It's telling you to speed up right now, so you got to be going at least three kilometers an hour and then steer all the way to the left, because it's gonna tell you to steer left, and then it's gonna tell you to steer right. That's all you have to do 
it takes maybe 20 seconds, 30 seconds, but you have to do that every day to make sure your front axle stays synchronized. If you're using four wheel steering a lot, you also have to use your back axle and do the same thing to synchronize your back axle, which would be this way and this way, because that's your manual back axle control. So if you need to crab steer into a shop or something like that, you can also do that by crab steering if you have manual axle control on. That's all those pages. The last one here is just your display settings. So you can change your brightness. You can change your time and also your date, but it looks like that's all pretty close. Renault Art, what time is it right now? 11.38. Okay, so we weren't close. <laughs> We're on German time here still is what that is actually. The date is right. The date's right. Yeah. 11.38, you said? Yes, sir. 39. Perfect. Okay. And May 20th. Or April 20th, sorry. Okay. So now our date and time down here will be correct. The bottom one, you'll never have to go in here. But what this is, is just the, you know, all of your warnings. Um, and also gives you your version number of the software on the monitor there. But never have to look at all that stuff. Any questions about this monitor? Okay, good. Cut. I think we're good.